You're listening to Devotions with Pastor Daniel Williams, taken from the Redemption Church YouTube channel. Hebrews 4.16 says and encourages us to, to apply this truth in our life. It says, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive and find grace and help uh, to help in time of need. First Peter 5, 7 says, Hey, cast your cares upon God because he cares for you. Now, first John 5, 14 tells us that we can have confidence in this, that when we pray, God listens. There's a lot of encouragement to us as believers because we're walking by faith, not by sight, that when we pray, God listens, that we can pray now through the gospel, that it's by God's grace. So as believers in Jesus, we can and should pray. It's the will of God to have fellowship with him. And we clearly see Jesus in throughout the gospels, pray often, go to the father in relationship and talk and listen to him. Uh, Luke five sixteen it says that Jesus would often withdraw uh, to desolate places and pray. Luke six twelve says that in those days he went out to the mountain to pray and all night continued in prayer to God. So Jesus, this was a priority to him to enjoy this relationship relationship with the Father. Uh, are you enjoying the relationship with the Father to pray, to cast your cares upon Him, to uh, understand and to know Him? And so with all that said, one thing I think that um, could be sort of hard for us is just praying at times. Now, at times praying is very easy, but other times it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of effort, and we just don't feel like it. Um, and we at times see Jesus as well uh, he would go often and pray, but he also needed discipline to pray. Uh, he needed discipline to pray because he was human. Uh, he needed naps and was tired and uh, sometimes wasn't feeling it. But if we notice in Mark chapter 1, verse 32 through 34, the first section of what we read in the beginning of this text, Jesus had this powerful ministry and he was doing miracles. He was busy. He was doing a lot of stuff, uh, so much so the whole town was coming to him. Um, but as we learn throughout the Gospels, Jesus' power is linked to his prayer life. His power is linked to prayer. He would often go away and pray and only do the Father's will. So there was this great clarity and great strength in his life and the ministry of prayer. And he actually makes this link for us in this text and other texts. Uh, we see in Mark chapter 9, his disciples, they try to do the same thing that Jesus does, right? They try to cast out demons and do that, but they couldn't do it to a little boy uh, that had a demon who was possessed. And in Mark chapter 9, verse 14 through 29, and clearly they wanted to do the same things Jesus was doing, uh, right? To follow his example, but they didn't have the power, authority, or healing uh, that Jesus did. Uh, they couldn't heal this boy. And so privately, they come along Jesus and they ask them a question in verse 28 and 29 of chapter nine. They say, Hey, when we, uh, and when we had entered the house, his disciples had uh, asked him privately, the text says, why could we not cast out that demon? Uh, and he told them, well, this kind cannot be driven out by any other than prayer by prayer. They wanted to do the things God wanted to do, but they didn't want to do the things God wanted to do. You know what I mean? Like they wanted the, the strength, but they weren't emulating God in prayer and they didn't see the connection. So Jesus connects prayer and power. It applies uh, that we see this application apply to the disciples, how they weren't praying enough, or at least like Jesus in the context. Um, and we sort of see this as they're not so much disciplined in prayer as uh, Mark chapter 14 goes on and tells that Jesus is going to the cross and he actually asks his guys, hey, pray for me. Um, I need the spiritual strength. Um, you know, I need you guys to stay up uh, and pray. And so he goes to the garden. He asks his disciples to pray for him three times and they fall asleep. Uh, verse 38 of chapter 14 in Mark, Jesus says to his disciples, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And it seemed like they struggled with this, not only in this situation, but even in the three years of ministry, because they were asking God, like, well, how do you pray? What does that look like? And, and they weren't praying enough to have power to cast out demons. We see Jesus had this spiritual authority and strength, but we see it connected to prayer and his disciples weren't engaging in the discipline of prayer as Jesus was. You know, I like what Rick Warren said. He said, little prayer, little power, much prayer, 
much power. You know, when God commands us to pray all the time, that that's his will, he wants us to actually live in his strength and his authority and his power to do the things he's called us to do. And we need to be uh, with him in order to serve uh, for him. God knows it's best for us to be dependent on him. And we actually do this through prayer, surrendering our will and our lives to God. Oftentimes when we think of spiritual strength, like Mark chapter one, verse uh, 32 through 35 or 34, um, we don't think of verse 35, which is actually the same sentence, uh, just the next sentence over, it links the two. And so 32 through 34 in chapter one, Jesus is healing and he has authority and power and all this different stuff. But listen to 35. We read it, but link, link these passages together. And so rising early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus departed. He went out to a desolate place and there he prayed. That's right. Jesus woke up while it was still dark. Have you ever tried doing that? It's hard. It's hard sometimes to wake up, to be disciplined. It was a long day of ministry, the Bible says. Many people were healed. He was tired. Remember, Jesus was fully man. He took naps, right? So he's human, but he's God. And he's depending on God. He's talking to his father. And so he gets up early and he goes and prays. He still had discipline and had to learn obedience and have discipline in his spiritual walk. And he uses this discipline to wake up early as it's still dark and made it a priority to pray. Which means we also need discipline when it comes to prayer. And we too need to make it a priority to have Jesus type of strength his power, his authority in our lives. Maybe this is why Peter tells us in 1 Peter 4, 7, therefore be self-controlled, be sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. We need to be self-controlled or sober-minded or disciplined for the sake of our prayers. Peter would learn that firsthand as he falls asleep and then doesn't have the strength to have the power to accept Christ and denies him. Uh, he would learn the hard way. We don't need to learn the hard way. We have examples. We have scripture. We have wisdom from God that we can apply and be blessed today. And so listen, sometimes we naturally love prayer. It's natural for us. We're thinking about God. We're in communion with God. It's really easy. But then there are other times where it's just labor. It's pain. Uh, it's hard work. And we have to go and wake up in the dark and go find a desolate place. And it takes discipline. And you know what the Bible says? That's okay. Because even Jesus had discipline in his prayer. And so can we. This is one of the reasons why our church, Redemption Church, um, really tries to encourage the body to practically uh, pray and fast. And we systematically take time for that. Tomorrow is our prayer and fasting every first Thursday of the month that we encourage our church to do. And we even have opportunity for prayer meetings, not just for uh, the first Thursday of the month, but during our community groups, or even yearly, annually, we take 21 days to pray and fast. And that's a very hard process at times. Sometimes we're looking forward to it. Sometimes we're not. But the reality is it's something that we want to be disciplined in prayer because we want to live in strength. We want to live in victory. We want to live in power like Jesus did. And we want to be used by God in a great way. But he's going to first work in us before he works through us. And so we want to be disciplined in our prayer and make it a priority. We understand there uh, will be seasons that prayer is easier than others, uh, right? When you're in need, uh, you want to pray more. But when life is good, sometimes you neglect it. And so we just want to make sure that we continue in prayer and encourage one another to pray often like Jesus did. Even when Jesus, we see, woke up early in the morning and went to a desolate place to pray. It took discipline for him to do that, but it was well worth it. And when we do pray in, in this way, we get spiritual strength. Uh, and this is what God wants for us, for our lives, spiritual strength to walk by faith, not by sight, not to be weak, but to overcome in him because all the promises are yes and amen in Jesus. And so just like Jesus uh, accomplished the father's will here in this life through the ministry of prayer, so can we be relying on the Holy Spirit and submitting to him. So I'll close with this verse just to encourage us. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says this. So do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let's keep on praying and let's take our needs to the Lord. God bless you guys and we'll talk to you in the next video.